Joining us now, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. Sarah, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good morning. Great to be with you, Chris. So let's start with the president's statement on Friday about possibly shipping detainees, immigrant detainees, to sanctuary cities all over the country. Here he is. California certainly is always saying, oh, we want more people. And they want more people in their sanctuary cities. Well, we'll give them more people. We can give them a lot. We can give them an unlimited supply. Is the president serious? Does he really intend to ship thousands of immigrants all across the country to cities like New York and San Francisco and a lot of other places? Uh, certainly, we're looking at all options. As long as Democrats, Chris, continue to ignore the crisis at the border, continue to refuse to sit down with the president and Republicans in Congress and come up with a solution to stop the national security and humanitarian crisis and the number of I illegal immigrants that are flooding across our border, then we have to look at all options across the table so that the towns right there on the border aren't taking on the entire burden and that we're shifting some of that burden uh, to places who constantly claim uh, to want to have open borders and want to have an open city. So let's put some of those people into their communities and into their towns and, and see if they are okay then with that same impact. Again, the big part of the, the question and the, the big thing we have to look at here is how do we stop this from being a problem in the first place? We shouldn't have to be putting people and moving them all across the country to spread that out. We should have a border that's strong, a border that's secure, a border that functions the way that it's supposed to. That's the president's number one priority. That's what he'd like to see happen, and that's what he'd like Democrats to work with him to solve. I, if they I, continue to be unwilling to do that, we're certainly looking at all options. Okay. Uh, I, I want to pick up on this specific option, though, about shipping migrants to sanctuary cities. The president tweeted last night that the, he has, the government has, quote, the absolute legal right to do so. But as has been reported, this was floated by the White House, brought over to DHS, and they said repeatedly that it was not legal to do so. And also they said counterproductive. Take a look at some of the objections that DHS raised. They said Congress has approved no specific money for this purpose. ICE says it would be, quote, an unnecessary operational burden. Sending them to sanctuary cities which don't cooperate with federal enforcement of immigration laws would make it harder to round them up later. And it also might be an incentive to more illegal immigration. So I, I guess the question is, how do you overcome all of those problems? Again, nobody thinks that this is the ideal solution, uh, but until we can fix the crisis at the border, we have to look at all options. This is one of them. Whether or not it moves forward, uh, that's yet to be determined. This was raised at a staff level initially uh, and pushed back on. The president wants us to explore it again, so that's being done, and they're doing a complete and thorough review. Uh, but again, the big thing is if Democrats including the mayors uh, and members of Congress in these communities want these individuals, they should be helping the president, frankly, look for solutions to bring them to their communities instead of fighting the president every step of the way. Let's work together. Let's solve the crisis at the border and let's figure out how it doesn't make a massive impact on any one particular community like we're seeing in a lot of the border towns uh, all along our southern one, border. One other question on immigration. I want to move on. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. The New York Times reports that last week. We like to stay busy. Yeah, you, and you keep us busy, and we appreciate that. The New York Times reports that last week the president told acting DHS chief Kevin McAleenan that he urged him to close the border to migrants and offered to pardon him if necessary. Now, the White House says that's not the way it went down. What did the president say to McAleenan? Uh, look, the president has addressed this. DHS has put out a statement on this topic saying that that is inaccurate reflection. Uh, the president is a, is a person and a president of law and order. That's his entire focus since coming in is actually restoring law and order to this country. And I trying understand to that, put but, but what, did he, what did he say is what I'm when asking. It comes to the immigration system. What did he say? Uh, look, the, pres the president has asked them to do everything they can and everything they're allowed to do under the law to stop the massive crisis we have at our southern border. It's the same thing he says publicly day in and day out. And it's the same 
same thing he says behind closed doors to staff is figure out how we stop this crisis, how we fix this problem. Let's look for every possible option to do so. And that's what our team has been doing. But it would be really nice and much simpler if Congress would spend 15 minutes and sit down with the president and let's just come up with the best solutions so that we don't have to do this. We don't have to look I, for uh, all of these different options. It seems so basic, I, I am, and yet Congress refuses to want to spend all of its time attacking the president, investigating the president on these taxpayer-funded fishing expeditions that are completely outrageous and completely baseless instead of doing their jobs. This all right, let me, let me ask you a little bit about that, and I promise you we're going to ask uh, Senator Democratic Senator Cardin in the next segment about the Democratic plan for for immigration, uh, Attorney General, they don't have one. Their only plan is to fight the president, and that's a it's a sad day in America when the Mexican government is willing to do more for the United States illegal immigration problem than Democrats in Congress. And I hope that you will ask them. And I hope you'll ask what their solution is and why they're well, so let, unwilling let's, to address Let's get address finished it. with this segment so I can get on to the next one. Attorney General Barr. Uh, says that he is going to release a redacted version of the almost 400-page Mueller report this week. But I want to put up what the president tweeted last night on this subject. This is the president. Why should radical left Democrats in Congress have a right to retry and examine the $35 million, two years in the making, no collusion Mueller report, when the crime committed was by crooked Hillary, the DNC, and dirty cops? Attorney General Barr will make that decision. I understand the president says there he's leaving it to Barb, but is he suggesting Congress doesn't have a right to see the Mueller report? No, that's not what he's saying. Um, the, the president has been clear he wants transparency throughout the process, but the president's 100 percent right. Once they get the report and they see what the summary has already laid out, that there was no collusion, there is no obstruction, it's time to move on. They don't get a second chance at trying to reinvestigate the president after two years and millions and millions of taxpayer dollars wasted on a complete but, 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 hoax that we all knew was a lie from the very but beginning Sarah, the, the, and something the, that Democrats use it as an excuse for why they lost an election. But, but Sarah, the report, according to Barr, and that's all we know about it was his bottom line conclusions says that according to Mueller while the report does not find clear evidence that the president committed obstruction it doesn't exonerate him either and the question is how are you going to deal with some evidence that's going to come out in this report that clearly is going to be damaging to the president I, I don't think it is going to be damaging to the president because the entire purpose of the investigation was whether or not there was collusion. Mueller was crystal clear in the fact that there was no collusion, not just between the But he wasn't crystal clear on obstruction. But any American, they couldn't find anything. They couldn't make a determination, which is basically Mueller's way legally of saying, we, don't, we can't find anything. We're going to leave that up to the process, which is the attorney general. He has made a decision, and so we consider this to be case closed. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction, which I don't know how you can interpret that any other way than total exoneration. All right, we're gonna... I think it is absolutely absurd that Democrats are going to continue to push this false narrative that there was somehow wrongdoing on behalf of the president. He won because he was the better candidate with a better message, a better vision, and he simply outworked his opponent. Okay. I, I mean, it, it's we, just we, absolutely I, 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 insane that they're going to continue to push this. Okay. I'm trying, I'm trying to ask some questions. Let's do a lightning round because i got three more questions I want to ask you. Quick questions, quick answers. The Justice Department has now charged... I'll do my best. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best, too. The Justice Department has now charged Julian Assange with conspiracy to hack into Defense Department computers. Here's what the president said about WikiLeaks during the campaign and then this week. WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. Boy, I love reading those WikiLeaks. I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. How can the president say he knows nothing about WikiLeaks? Remember, lightning round. And does he regard Julian Assange as a villain or a hero? Uh, look, clearly the president was making a joke during the 2016 campaign. Uh, certainly we take this serious. In fact, our administration is the only one that's done anything about it. Let's not forget that the reason Julian Assange is being looked at is because of the engagement he had with Chelsea Manning. That individual is the person that the Obama administration actually commuted their sentence. 
we're the only ones that have taken this whole process seriously and actually doing something to solve the problem. Okay. The president uh, was making a joke during the campaign. It was talking about the specifics of the case at that moment. It was a joke he made over and over again. But uh, in any case, let me ask you about Ilhan Omar. The president tweeted a video Friday of the speech that Congresswoman Ilhan Omar made, intercutting it with images of 9 11. Take a look. Some people did something. Now, that was only the only five seconds we felt comfortable showing. It goes on in a much worse way of her seeming, no question about it, to minimize 9-11 and then horrible images from 9-11. I guess two questions. One, it goes on for 43 seconds like that. Is the pre why is the president comfortable putting out horrible images like that? And secondly, does he worry at all about inciting violence against Muslims in general or Ilan Omar in specific? Certainly nothing could be further from the truth. The president's not trying to incite violence against anybody. He's actually speaking out against it. The question is, why isn't the congresswoman, why is she brushing this off dismissively? She continues to make anti-Semitic comments uh, over and over again, and Democrats refuse to call her out for it. If she continues to do it, the president will continue to call her out, call her out by name, and he's not going to be ashamed, nor should he be. The only shame I see in this is that Democrats and others aren't standing up and taking the okay. same hard line that the president it is. That was one of the, the most horrific moments in American history. And for her to talk about it in such a dismissive way uh, is frankly disgusting and abhorrent. I'm glad the president is calling her out and holding her accountable for it. Okay, her, her final, final question. And we have just blown through all kinds of lightning round rules. I'm not sure you'll be invited back for lightning rounds after <laughs> You're not that. asking yeses or noes. Lightning I know that. I know that. Yes no. All right, well, I'll try better this time. House Democrats have now given the IRS nine more days to turn over six years of Trump tax returns. Here's what the president said about that this week. While I'm under audit, I would not give my taxes. Uh, there's no law whatsoever. Will the president demand that the IRS not turn over his tax returns, or will he live? This is, I think, pretty close to yes or no. Or will he live with whatever the IRS decides? Uh, the president's been clear from the beginning. Uh, as long as his taxes are under audit, he's not going to release them. He's also uh, filled out hundreds of pages in financial disclosure. I know, but I will, will he tell the IRS not to... But hold on, Chris, this isn't... Will he tell this the IRS really not to release point. them now? Uh, we'll have to see what happens on that front. But the president's been clear. This issue's even been litigated. We went through it in 2016. But one of the biggest things that I think people aren't seeing is the fact that the only reason that the Oversight Committee has the ability to request someone's taxes or for the purpose of determining policy, this has nothing to do with whether or not they're going to determine policy. This is all about political partisanship. This is a dangerous, dangerous road. And frankly, Chris, I don't think Congress, particularly not this group of congressmen and women are smart enough to look through the thousands of pages that I would assume that President Trump's taxes will be. My guess is most of them don't do their own taxes, and I certainly don't trust them to look through the decades of success that the president has and determine anything. He's filled out hundreds of pages in a financial disclosure have form, you, have and you, I think it is a disgusting right. overreach that they are making when they're not okay. doing this based on policy, and it puts every American who's filled out tax reform or tax forms the, in the past this is a, this is a yes or no if question have you filed your one, they have you filed everybody have you filed your taxes yet i'm almost finished i'm in the process <laughs> i've got a couple more days i'm asking I'll get them in i'm asking for an extension okay sarah thank you <laughs> thanks for your time always good to talk with you you bet thanks chris